Hello members, uh, what I want to do today is uh, just give you a bit of an overview of casting with resin again. Uh, I've done some videos on this before but quite a long time ago um, using some different product today. Um, so I've just got a couple of uh, moulds out of our range. We've got about 200 moulds on the websites, um, both Linker Online and Scalecast.co.uk. Um, so this one is just from our new LS range which is a um, a, a new stone range as it were and this one I picked really because it's um, it's got quite a lot of detail in with the little tiny bar windows and, and the brick and, and, and all the detail on there um, I'm going to be using a product um, from a company called DWR Plastics um, which is this polyurethane fast cast resin um, one of the liquids is, is like a black colour uh, so like a dark amber um, they have this available on their site. We don't sell this on our website uh, because really there's plenty of people doing resins. Um, and this is the other part of the mix which is almost like an ivory beige. Um, again polyurethane fast cast resin. Um, quite cheap really to buy you know the two big bottles um, and, and you can get a lot of, of, lot of resin casts out of there. For those of you that's doing normal powder casts uh, I've got some other videos online and on the websites. Um, and we'll cover those again uh, a little bit later. Uh, effectively what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with one of these um, cheap and cheerful sort of um, weighing scales that you can buy on eBay for five or six quid these days uh, because with the thing is with resin the only important thing really is that it's, uh, it's very accurate in terms of the weight and measures. So these two are mixed in equal parts um, and I'm going to do this fairly quickly and then just show you the sort of drying process. So um, I just generally start with um, some plastic cups, cheap plastic cups you can buy from pound stores and stuff like that. Uh, because they're just easy and cheap and throw away type thing. Um, and then um, I just get light up sticks for mixing because that's all you sort of need. Um, so I pop my cup on the scale make sure it's zeroed. Uh, I'm going to do a bit of guesswork here on how much I need. I'm probably going to just mix about 30 grams or something of each just to show you the uh, the video. So I'm just going to pour in um, 30 grams of the amber into, into one of the plastic cups. You can see how quick and easy this is. Just put that over there fresh cup onto the scale, make sure it's zeroed and 30 grams of the ivory. There we go, give or take a gram but that's close, as close as it needs to be. Um, and then all you really need to do is pour the, uh, the amber, I always pour the amber into the cream as it were, uh, so just pour it in there, mix at the same time. This is fairly fast stuff so 5 or 10 minutes and we're done. You can get from DWR some of the slower, slower resin if you want a little bit more working time. I'm just used to working with it so just do it fairly quickly. Okay, so I hope you can see this okay. As soon as we've got that, we just sort of start to pour, try and do it from this side for the video, into the surrounding area, and then just let it seep around the mould. Nice and gently and reasonably slowly, but you'll find that it, it finds its way into every gap itself. And you'll notice as, as it comes around the windows, it'll start to just creep into those little window bars all on its own. It's really, really good at finding its own, its own path and just sort of fill the mould. And then the second one, I'm just going to cast this, this little top piece here. If you're not sure how much um, to mix, just one tip, 
is get some water, put it in a cup, maybe put 50 grams of water in a cup, pour it into the moulds, then measure the cup afterwards and it'll tell you how much it's used. You're going to need a little bit more than what it says. So if it says 30, you see I've done a little bit too much there, so I've probably got away with 25, 23, something like that on there, but there we go. Um, yeah, pour the water in, uh, measure the cup, and then just see what the difference is on what you've used so that you don't waste too much. Or second to that, just have another mould ready. You know, have um, another small mould at the side with something that you may want to cast, and then any excess can go in that. I do that all the time. Uh, I hope you can see the the resin in here. What, what you're looking for, it, this starts to produce heat. Um, this one's a low odour, so you, you don't really get any smell and it doesn't bother you and you don't get any fumes, so it's nice and easy to use. And you, if you feel the cup, it's starting to get warm. And what you'll see, um, I'm not sure if you can see that, but uh, at the minute it's still staying liquid. That won't last for much longer. Uh, another minute or so and that'll start going um, like a white, creamy, ivory colour. Um, and it'll start setting quite rapidly. Um, so whilst that's just beginning to set, and you might want to keep your eye on the video because you'll start to see it go shortly. Um, it's exactly the same piece there that I just cast a little bit earlier. Here's one I made earlier. You know how the pun goes. Um, this is this is the same resin, exactly the same resin, and it's the same piece. And we can see the the difference in the in the colour as it goes from the amber to the to the cream. Um, they do the one in, in white and as I said it's, it's a lot slower and, and you could sort of be pouring now for about 10 minutes so you could pour quite a lot <clears throat> and but it does take longer to go off so it depends on how quickly you want to get these out I can normally take that out of a mould from pouring it in about 15 minutes and it's pretty pretty solid by that time it doesn't break it's absolutely solid and you get all the uh, all the good pieces um, it's still taking a little while to go. It's a pretty cold day. If it's a warmer day, it'll go faster. Um, so this one, anyway, is one of the tunnel inserts that we do. We also do the tunnel range, which is in our new LS range, um, which is these. Um, and then we do the abutments that go on the sides of those, which I'll show you shortly while we're waiting for this to go off. And actually, if we just have a little look, I don't know if you can quite see it, but we're just getting sort of like a white streak coming through on the mould. Um, anyway, these these uh, inserts are designed to fit exactly within those, so we get sort of shop fronts and and those sorts of things. Uh, there's three or four in this range at the minute, and we're going to be extending that. Uh, but that's the difference between casting with resin. So for a for a larger part, I would recommend that you just cast in powder. One is it's cheaper, it's easy to do. Um, you can see plenty of the other videos that I've been doing. Um, and I'm just going to give you one of the tips whilst we're whilst we're just waiting for this to go off. And you see, this is uh, this is starting to change colour now. It's quite interesting to watch it because um, once it starts, it doesn't take long to go. Um, and if we look in the cup, we're starting to solidify in there already. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So casting in powder is fairly quick because you just mix up the mix, pour it in. It takes maybe half an hour um, to get solid enough and then take it out and leave it to dry probably overnight um, until all the water's come out of it um, and that's pretty solid from a perspective of doing your model scenery um, stuff with the really fine bars and, and all of this you can do it the casting powder it's a bit of an art it takes a little while to get used to it if you haven't done it before but anybody who's been doing it for a while it, it comes to you and, and it doesn't take too long you know two or three goes at it and you're fairly quick again this is starting to go a bit quicker now um, so and the resin can quite easily fasten into there just glue it in and paint it up and um, what I do recommend that you do is you glue with PVA glue yeah to fasten it in resin to resin super glue yeah so be a bit careful with your fingers and make sure you get some of that um, um, what, what, uh, solvent so if you get it on your fingers you can put some solvent on and get it off uh, but that's pretty much the only stuff that glues that properly to itself um, so that's that. Um, so we can see this is this is really starting to go now, but I want to show you how easy this is to extract um, in a little while when it's uh, when it's finished. 
what else can I show you while we're uh, while we're sort of waiting along? So this is some of the uh, the stone walling um, that I did in in one of the stone walling molds here with resin. Again, something as thick as this. I mean, this is sort of eight millimeters thick. Um, you can do that perfectly well in stone. And I've got some that I did in stone just to show you the uh, the type of finish that you're going to get, which is spot on. You know, it's, it's not much different to uh, to the resin. Um, and again, the what I, I like about the stone is it paints up quite nice. So that's the painted version of of that one. Um, and the, this is the the LS range. Similarly, when we're doing something as as large as maybe this, which again is the LS sloping wall that fastens to the um, to the whole line sides that we do. Um, these moulds again, you, you just pour in the, the the casting powder, leave it for half an hour, take it out, leave it to dry, and you can cast as many as you want. So you can do quite a lot of walling in a short period of time. This should be almost getting um, free to the touch now. So again, it's it's solidified into the cup. Just put that down. It's solidified into the cup, and it's starting to get pretty hard. It's still a little bit soft around the edges because if I squeeze the cup, it's too it's still too soft. Um, but it's definitely going. Right. Okay. So we need to leave this for a little while. I'm sorry about the uh, the pause in the video. You can skip ahead if you want and have a look. Um, so just to cover it again, uh, we're using a two-part polyurethane fast cast resin. Uh, I'm using the, the quickest one that they do, which is the uh, the amber or be uh, amber and beige. So it finishes as a beige completed finish. This color. Um, I buy this roughly in uh, the one kilogram per part size, so two kilogram kit. Um, Today's prices, and it depends on how long this video is on YouTube, uh, but today's prices, that's about 26 quid. But you can do an awful amount of, uh, of casting and, and stuff with that. Uh, just a couple of parts I did up here, which are some of our abutments that we did again in the resin. The beauty of the resin is it's absolutely, it, you can't break it really. Um, you've got to go a long way to break it. Um, but having said that, when you do it in, in stone, just similar, I mean, these bigger parts are just absolutely solid as a rock. Um, <clears throat> casting, you can cast in Herculite for something as big as this, which is the cheapest version of doing it. I also do the Tough Cast, uh, which is available on both our websites, Linker Online and Scalecast. Um, and that's a little bit more of a, a finer powder and a finer uh, material, and it's also harder than, than Herculite, which is more important for something like this. If you want to cast this in stone, it takes a bit longer and, and a bit more practice to be able to do it. Okay, so that's still ooh, still a bit sticky and uh, not quite gone off yet, which I was hoping it had. Um, when it was quite hot in here and warm the other day, um, I did quite a few of these in, in a short period of time. Um, similarly, um, let me just show you these then while we're waiting. So these are a couple of resins I did um, of just some little wall toppers. Um, this is done in the fast cast resin. Again, quite solid. Bit of flexibility in there. That one's done in the slower cast resin. So these took 35 to 40 minutes, uh, maybe even upwards of an hour, to, to solidify. Um, then when I took them out, I just lay them on the I, I lay them on the glass because I like everything nice and flat, which is uh, quite an important thing to think about anyway. The last thing you want is any slope on here because this is liquid, so you want to just make sure that um, everything's absolutely flat as a pancake. The other good thing with using the plastic cups is the the one that I poured the amber in. Yeah, you can just keep reusing that. So effectively, all you need to do is put some more in there if you're doing some more, and then fill the white in, and then just keep pouring the amber into the into the into the ivory white, as it were, and that way you're not wasting as many cups. So it doesn't sound important, but if you're doing a lot of casting and you, you know you're getting a lot of parts all ready for to put on your model railway or your scenery layout, um, it's just quick and easy. Um, and of course, once you've used your first cup, you can just start throwing all the uh, all the sticks into the into the 
burnt cup and the red ones underneath. I'm just waffling on while uh, while we while we get this sort of finished. Okay, it's still a little bit tacky. It's very very warm to the touch, um, and you pretty much know when it's finished when it goes when it goes cold. So I just paused the uh, the video for five minutes whilst uh, whilst this was going harder, and if to the touch now it's quite cool, um, so it's pretty much okay to come out. It doesn't matter if you leave it a bit longer; um, it just depends how quick you want the models back to to do any more. So these come out really really easy, absolute doddle, yeah. So all you need to do is just prise one corner off and just lift them out, uh, and then I just sit them on the flat because when they're they're quite soft and, and which actually is great if you wanted to do a curved piece yeah but uh, leave them flat until they've gone off properly uh, probably about another half an hour and, and then they'll stop moving altogether um, a couple of hours and they're absolutely rock solid actually when they're soft like that's a good time if you want to do a cut so if you wanted to cut something in half do it now with a knife yeah um, it's solid enough to do that uh, but it's soft enough to cut which is it's like cutting toffee yeah just before it's uh, solidified so you could have left these in a little bit longer but i'm just going to take them out just for the sake of uh, of the video yeah they're still a tiny little bit soft but uh, i don't want to hang around much to be honest with you so there we go it's out yeah this this stuff on the side will just break off uh, the thash as it were two second job um, and there you go all finished all done leave it flat let it set solid job finished a couple of quick tips then before we go if you're not going to be casting in your molds again wash them in warm soapy water otherwise they're going to start to stain brown it's just the stuff that the pigment stuff that's in the uh, in, in the resin so give them a good wash in warm soapy water let them dry off they'll be perfectly fine no problem at all you could probably cast in a mold like this 30 times without putting any release agent in whatsoever you can put some release agent in if you want they do it in a spray and they do it in just a brush on stuff um, generally speaking i don't bother too much these days yeah i just wash them out every time yeah not every time if i finish casting for that day yeah so i might do three or four or five of those in a session and then stop and then just go and wash all the molds up put them on the draining board job done um, that's it guys if you um, I'll, I'll be doing some more videos shortly as well so watch out for those um, if you need any help whatsoever if you need um, to contact me you can contact me on both websites so linkeronline.co.uk scalecast.co.uk and happy casting